listen, I dropped a video where I was explaining, should we endorse or back this strike? Of course, it ended immediately, but that's what I did. And my conversation was, if you did not see that video, was basically, these people woke up at 200,000, 150,000, 200,000, 300,000. And they said, we should strike. And it got me to thinking, we drive down the street at 50,000, average trucker makes about $58,000 a year, at 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, and don't think that at all. Now, my question is, the question should be, am I a supporter of a striking? And that's not a simple, that's not a simple answer because on one, I am patriotic and I don't really believe in any course of action that weakens our national security. I just, I, I shudder to think and believe it or not, these type of strikes and everything they do they do threaten our national security. So I can't say that I am for it, but I will say I am not against it because when you look at the pay of the dock workers, when you look at the pay of the dock workers with their collective bargaining and how it is steady rose and you look at our pay, it is obvious that they are benefiting from something we're not. They got them to agree, if I'm not right, y'all can wreck the numbers. I believe it's 68% in the next six years. 68% raise in the next six years. So think about how long you've been driving. If you got a 68% raise, that means in 2018, you was 45 cents. 62, you was 45 cents. If you were getting 45 cents in 2015 and you got a 62% raise, what would you be getting now? Let's apply some of the benefits that they just got to us. I got to get something. Someone do the math for me. Corey, I see you. Okay. I make nine to a hundred thousand. But like I said, that's one part of the conversation. Then you would have to add, let's say we just got everything the dock workers got. And I'm going to spitball here. I don't, I haven't seen their contract. I'm just going to assume some of this stuff because I assume they get better stuff, better time off, FLA, family off, for sickness. How many PTO days do they get? Do they get every holiday? What is their break like? Do they have credit unions backing the, the, these people? And I will always say this is not a, it's not a shot at those union people. What I'm asking you is, what would it be if we got it? I don't think they don't deserve it. All I'm saying is it makes you think. Let's think about a deployment for a minute. There's a man, we'll call him Jonathan lives down the county by the Battle of Battery. He has three children. Since he lives out Battle of Battery, Alabama, there's not many jobs. It's American trucking story. There's not many jobs. Jonathan gets a job at say Mega Carrier. Mega Carrier tells Jonathan, you gonna make $75,000 a year in the area he lives in. That's good money down Battle of Battery. Average person down Battle of Battery by the Chattahoochee River only makes about, eh, 18 to 25,000 a year at one of those BS factories they work at. So he's pissing in high cotton. Financially, you would say. His old lady gets to sit home. He gets to send money home. Problem is, he got three kids because down there, they fertile down there. So he busting and loading. He got three kids, two boys, two girls. Two needs braces, one has asthma. How much... From what y'all know about our benefits packages that we get, how much is Jonathan's health care for those four kids at an OTR company you work at? Some of y'all got kids. Y'all can, can speak to it. I'll wait. I need numbers. Because believe it or not, this will be seen by strike and dock workers. It'll be seen by people in high places. They just act like they don't hear it. Angelique says about 500. It was just as a ban, 800. We got to get to an agreed upon conversation here. We have to get to an agreed upon amount, 800, 1400 a month. Yeah, give me a month number. 
You live by the Chattahoochee. He has two children. He has four children, two boys, two girls, one with asthma, two need braces. So he has to cover himself, his old lady, and these four children on an on a OTR health benefit. Y'all know. Y'all seen them. We'll say, to be nice, 800 Out of that $75,000 and him being gone permanently, because he ain't going to be able to go home. That's another thing, too. These guys get to go home and kiss their children because they're in a better part of society where trash will move along amicably. We'll say, we'll say a ban. Let's just keep it at a ban. That's $12,000 out of his income. What is 12 out of $75,000? And that's if his year goes well because, you know, weather stops our money. Traffic starts, stops our money. The freight market stops our money. If the, if the port people do what they're supposed to do, stops our money. He's down to $63,000 by battle of battery down at Chattahoochee River. $63,000. Still good money for down there. It's still good money. Honestly. Still good money. But he needs a car note. Car note, we can call that a cool 700. Add insurance, that's $1,000 a month. That's another 12 off 63. What is he left with? We know, Corey. This is, we're, it's fictional. We just, we just, just bear with us. It's fictional. He's left with 51. Th- wait, wait, we ain't got the taxes yet. He's left the $51,000. How much does it cost to feed four kids right now? What is his weekly? He's paying for food. Now, this is coming out of his check because he don't get to be home. This just come out of his check while he's driving. Give me a round number for weekly groceries right now. We're talking about four children, bro. Four American USD grade churn. We'll split the difference. We'll say $350 a week. I'm being nice today. $350 a week. That's just, we just trying to find something in the middle. Thanks for Big Mike being the only person that hit the gas yet. $350, right? So we're looking at what, $1,100, $1,200 a month? $1,400 a month? So if you take fourteen hundred dollars and dis- and divide it by twelve, by twelve, what do you get? What do you get? It's eight hundred dollars to feed these children. We haven't clothed them. We haven't paid for school stuff, school supplies, nothing. So we take that from fifty one thousand dollars. What do you get? You have thirty four thousand dollars left. He hasn't paid taxes yet, which is I don't know what Alabama taxes are. What's the Alabama tax rate? What's the Alabama tax rate? Twelve percent, Angelique says. 12% would have been taking off the top of 75,000. What is 12% of 75,000? We'll say 10K for the year. So, th- so we have $24,000 left. And let's be nice and say he didn't pay for a video app, cable, internet, lights, none of that. Divide $24,000 into 12 months. We already talked about car John. That's already been taken out. $24,000. So what is that? Corey says it's two grand. $2,000. He's left with, is this, well, he's saying $1,000. What is it left with? Fourteen grand. Yeah, that's $1,000. He has $1,000. And once you divide $1,000 by four, which is what they have for the month, every week he's left with what? $50. $250 for being... The counterpart of the port people who just got a 62% raise. He's, that's an average driver. No business connections who just goes honestly as an American and works. He's left with $250 for the week. He has to give allowance to the children. He has to have good. How does he not take on debt? How is he going to buy a living room and, and bedroom sets and toys? What kind of Christmas is that? He's to the God to rebirth and re-education. He is left with $250. Now, from drivers who drive OTR, how much does it cost for Jonathan to eat on the road a week? I'll wait. King, I see you. I appreciate you for hitting the cash app. Only three people hit the cash app. Only three people believe in this conversation. Only three people believe in their situation getting better. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> 150 a week is, is, is conservative. That, that's about a person who's trying to, you got to think, he knows his situation. The Raj would say 50, but we'll say 150. So we take 150 a week for him to eat. He got a, a, so what happens if her tire pops? When she has the four kids taking them back and forth to school, backward and forward, what happens if the tire pops? If a light comes on? What happens if a light comes on? What happens if the basement floods? So what does Jonathan naturally do? He takes on debt. 
what is the current state of Jonathan's credit card debt? Hmm? And I hear some people saying, oh, well, shorty, why? Need to work. Okay. Let's say she works in an area like Biola Battery by the Chattahoochee River. She going to make $16 an hour. How much is child care for four kids? So working is really out of the question. Child care would cost more than she would earn. How's she going to team drive with four children? He makes too much for her to get government assistance. No, no, no. He's just screwed. There you go, knowledge. Thousand a week for four? Easy. So they don't got to That's not going to happen. She would have to work from home. But what, as a content creator, you're right, right. Yeah, she's not going to make no money. And she can't work from home in the tech world because they have a campaign against working from home. They stopped that. So that's not about to happen. You see how we discuss things against our own interests? No one is saying he needs a 62% raise. You see that? Y'all telling her to work from home. Y'all telling her to do all this shit. But none of you are thought to think to say he needs a 62% raise. As Daggett said, Nothing happens unless everything comes on ship. Yeah, everything comes to the country on ship. True. But everything gets to the stores by truck. Everything gets to the st He needs to make more money, period. Now, would it help Jonathan if he was going to get a 62% raise? All these bills are done. 62%. What is 62% of $75,000? Only four people hit the cash app. That's what I'm saying. You march against your own self-interest. What? It, that's $121,000. That would take him from $24,000, 80, 90, 100, 100, 120. He would have 50,000 left, 46,000. They thank you, Wow. About $46,000 left. And all that would do is put him above water. Do you know why? Because as when the dock workers were getting raises the past 15 years, we weren't. So we're still behind. $121,000 is treading water right now. He still cannot build wealth. He still cannot get a retirement. We're not even discussing a retirement because, you know, their retirement is taken care of. Jonathan's isn't. One thing we didn't discuss about Jonathan, can he put anything into his 401k? He's left with 250 at the end of the week. And he take, he's left with 250 at the end of the week. Then he has to eat 100 of that. So he was supposed to give his last 150 to a retirement, 10%, as they say. Really? And then you say no one wants to sign up? Of course they don't. Of course they don't. No one's asking to make 400,000 crane dock worker. No one's asking for that in the trucking field. We, we are at the asking point of treading water. Treading water. That's it. No matter how much the hazmat guys would love to come over here and say I'm hazmat, hazmat does not have enough slots to take 2 million drivers. So your argument is flawed at its base. Even if all of you went and got hazmats right now, they can't take all of you. It pays more because the position need is rare. You still need people taking big box shit. If people only hauled hazmat shit, would you have any stuff at the stores to buy? Would there be any medicine for your children at the pharmacy? So you still need regular people. So mega carrier, who will see this? You do understand that this new age of people had the internet and they are informed. So when they look at your pay scale and they do the math, which they do, they say, no, that's simple. That's why they're not signing up. That's why they're jumping from job to job. That's why. It has nothing to do with anything else. They just know better now. So when you offer them, we'll call it 60 cents a mile, you're saying, I'm offering you below wages. That's what you're saying to him when he looks at it. When you offer him not Blue Cross Blue Shield and you tell him it's going to be $300 a week, he knows I'm looking for another job immediately. This is the reality of it. This is the reality of it because they televised this strike. That means all the truckers seen it. All the truckers seen it. This is not some strike back in the 70s that you would have caught through a newspaper. This was in Technicolor. And they're thinking, wait a minute. These some bitches are making $200,000 a year? And they go home every day? They go home every day? I'm pulling 75 before taxes and I'm gone 300 days a year? So they're thinking, every trucker right now is thinking, I need to find a union. That's what they're thinking. I need to find me a union. Let's be clear. Union is not going to hire you. That's one. Unions, they purposely keep less people to get bigger wages. They can't fill all the slots because then the wages will go. That's how they think. Number two, 
what's not going to get you into a, a union, depending on where you are, is going to be this. Unions are historically for white people. And I know people are going to say I'm racist in this point. Just look up white labor on your phone. You don't have to, you have to believe me. After the great migration and people start going to different places, the cigarette said white labor on it. Look it up. Don't believe me. I'm not doing this to be ignorant. I'm not doing this to be racist. This is a historical fact. This is a historical fact. That is the whole point of their conception. Period. The point of a union is exclusion. That is the point. That's why it was built. So even if you said, I don't want to go no, uh, I'm going to find me a union. If you have this, it strikes against you. It strikes against you. That's one. Let's say you're white, but you don't know nobody. It counts against you. Now, when I'm here now, I'm speaking facts. This is not hate. This is not it. This is just a fact. Even if you are white, blue eyed, blonde hair, if, if Carl gets there and don't know nobody, he's screwed. He's screwed, bro. They're not going to hire him. If Jed gets there, they're not going to hire him. I seen the picket line where the dude was holding two of his kids and they were holding picket line. That's a person getting the next job. There is no one size fits all. What I'm telling you is when you look at your pay, the only reason you're happy with your pay is because you have not done the math. That's it. And the way we cope with the pay being smaller is we take things away. We duck having children. We duck having a family. We duck having a house. We duck these things. That way we can still feel good about our pay. But the truth is you should be getting paid enough to have all that shit. Because truckers in the 70s had that all. They had a house. They had kids. They had vacations. People went to college. Everything. Mr. Star, thank you for hitting the cash app and supporting actual content that helps your career. Most people won't. Peace to the God. Doc LLC, I see you. So is it wrong for me to think of self-preservation and say, we should be getting something. I believe one of the comments on the video was TB don't hate. I don't think the doc workers shouldn't get it. I'm saying, what about us? That's it. What about us? It would hurt the country to pay you that much money. That's not true. That's not true. Billionaires do not build the country, bro. Billionaires do not insulate the country from threat. Billionaires don't do that. The middle class does. You have to, un like I said, a lot of this stuff takes understanding. The middle class builds the country. Why? You give it to the precariat, which is what you are, the people who live increasingly precarious. You give it to them because when you give them money, they have to what? I will wait. JL, I see you. Thanks for hitting the cash app. Wendell, thanks for hitting the cash app. There's a rebirth to the nation. When you give the middle class decent wage, what do they do with it? They spend it. I do not believe in trickle down economics because it's bullshit. It's trickle up economics. If I take 3 million Jonathans that are driving down the street right now and I, and I up their shit 62, 68%, they get 120, 150,000. What are they going to do? They're going to pay for housing for that girl that's back in the house with the kids. They're going to buy a car, better car. They're going to take out loans. They're going to give the money right back that easily. They're going to give the money right back immediately. They won't save none of it. $121,000, they're not saving any money. They're going to go buy the houses. They're going to put the kids in the best school zones, right? They're going to get the money right back. They're going to be right back to zero. That's why they say the country is built on middle class. The people who make good money, but not enough to not work. That's what they're going to do. They're going to buy houses. They're going to have kids. They're going to do all those things. And if you look at the numbers right now, the kids' numbers going down. People aren't having kids like that. As my wife pointed out to me a few months back, David's bridal's closing down. That means people aren't getting married because the way they think, which is financially correct, they can't afford it. So if we were trying to fix this situation, we would pay the middle class workers, a livable wage. And let's be clear, a livable wage right now is 120, period. And I don't even think that's enough to buy you a house in most places. The livable wage right now is 120 a year. All they're going to do is spend that shit, which in turn, if you gave them 120 a year, all of these companies would have record years immediately. So when I ask you, what is the purpose of us running around making this low of a wage? Going to the, now every trucker that goes to the dock knows you're making $200,000 a year. They know that now. They didn't know that before.
They know it now. So they know it can be done. They know it can be done. They just know you're not going to do it. And what do they do? They stop taking the job. There's a crane worker out there making $300,000 a year. Taking it from the boat, dropping it, taking it from the boat, just doing this. And you're driving across country and not seeing your kids for two, 300 days a year. And he makes 3.5 times what you make. This conversation is for you. That you could have went, Eddie. They just wouldn't have hired you. 